John likes tech and lives in Indiana, you know Kevin likes the Dodgers and talks on the radio John plays games on Xbox and on his Nintendo While Kevin runs around LA with his mustachio It's the Lack of Genius Podcast In your ear holes at last They don't know they're Mars from Venus That's why it's the Lack of Genius Podcast Alright John Hey Kevin It's good to see you Uh, This is the first time I've ever played that jingle Where I'm a little bit like nervous about sharing my vocal skills because we have someone who is far better at singing than I today and this is very exciting for us let's as they say without further ado let's just bring her in this is Alyssa Alyssa hello it's good to see you hello it's so good to be here thank you for having me yeah we 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 were just on a little pre-show talking about it but we so appreciate your enthusiasm and your willingness to be here and uh, we're streaming live and this is uh this is all very exciting Alyssa is well, here, let me let me fill you in on something, Alyssa. One of the one of the th- reasons that I like having guests on on this particular podcast is because you're the one quizzing us because we're the only podcast that makes the guests do work. Because you're <laughs> quizzing us, I have to do zero research. Like the less right. I know, the better. So I get to kind of play dumb and be like, "You know what, Alyssa? I don't know very much about you. Tell us who you are, what your what your role here is today. Tell us a little bit about you." Yeah, well, so my primary thing and the reason we're here today is that I am a professional opera singer. I have been singing professionally for 11 going on 12 years now. Wow. I've sung all over the country. And I also in this last year, because what better thing to do during the pandemic, uh, started my own opera company because wow. I'm a little bit salty about how the industry is going. And I was like, I'm gonna fix it. So I do a lot of producing, performing. I kind of have my hand in all sorts of things. And I also am pretty well versed in a lot of different genres. So I've done some musical theater cabaret type things. I do opera, I do concerts, I do art songs, if that means anything to y'all. Nope, (laughs) nothing. Don't know what an art song is. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I also do a lot of work with living composers. And it's one of my favorite things to work on new pieces and create something totally new. I I do too many things, some might yeah. say. Yeah, well, I can connect to that. It sounds like you have a lot of creative energy yeah. and a lot of music in your heart and skills to share with the world. Starting a production company uh, for opera, that's insane in the best way possible. Yeah. 11 or 12 years of opera singing. Did you always love singing? And then at what point did it turn into, wait a minute, I ha- I can knock out this opera style pretty good? Or, you know, tell us about that journey. So basically, since, you know, the joke is always like, oh, she came out of the womb singing, but like kind of literally, <laughs> uh, I grew up <laughs> I grew up in a household where there was always music playing, where everyone was always singing. My grandmother actually was a huge, huge opera fan. And oh. it was like the proudest thing ever for her to be like, God gave me an opera singer as a granddaughter. My life is complete, which is like the sweetest You're thing to me. Golden child right off the bat. That's great. <laughs> Basically. So I grew up hearing all sorts of music. My mom was a huge Beatles fan and also a huge Broadway fan. And so like all sorts of music I grew up hearing. And uh-huh. the second I was old enough to get on the stage, I was like, let me get up there. That's where I'm meant to be. I'm this like since I was a little kid, this huge, eccentric, loud tiny thing. There's some really funny pictures of me in elementary school where I'm like a head and a half shorter than everybody else, but it's clear that I have like 10 times more energy. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But yeah, I've I've been performing since I I was able to, but when I was in middle school, I got into anime and a lot of Japanese culture and I was like, I'm going to become a J-pop star. This is my goal in life. And I went into high school and I was like, I'm still going to be, yeah, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to move to Japan. And I'm become a huge star, and uh, obviously that did not happen. Yes. <laughs> but it is not too late, school, Alyssa. It's not too late, is all I'm saying. I, I would not be upset about that. <laughs> <laughs> so as as I went through high school, I did a lot of different things. I went to a performing arts high school. I had phenomenal, phenomenal training. I'm so grateful to my choir teacher because I learned all of my basic theory. I was also in band, but as I went through the choir program, I sort of got more and more frustrated that when we were in our a cappella group and we were doing pop stuff. I was never getting the solos in that. And I was like, why am I not getting the solos in this? But in all the Mm. classical music in our choir, like 
everyone got mad at me because I got every single solo in that. And I was like, first of all, don't at me because you're not auditioning for them. But second of all, I guess I'm good at this. <laughs> <laughs> and this was literally probably before people could even at you and you were saying, don't Accurate. at me. Accurate. <laughs> Accurate. Yeah, that was, that's definitely a perfect representation of what I said, you know, yeah. 15 <laughs> years ago. Um, but, but then my the summer between my junior and senior year of high school, I ended up doing my first opera. It was the Pirates of Penzance by Gilbert and Sullivan. And I sang the lead. And it was this magical experience of like the people I was around were amazing. And I was like, oh, like this environment is awesome. On top of me being like, oh, oh, I'm good at this. Wow. Oh. <laughs> and humorously <laughs> enough, as I've gotten older and I've gone through all my training, now I can sing pop music. But, you know, however many years ago, it was like, oh, no, it was hot garbage. It was so bad. <laughs> How funny. And uh, Alyssa, the name of your company is Paradox Opera, right? That is correct. And humorously enough, speaking of the Pirates of Penzance, the inspiration for the name comes from one of the most famous numbers from that show, A Most Ingenious Paradox. And so that's what like, I was wondering. Putting all, yeah, put it all together. The listeners can't hear this, but here's our logo. I'm very proud of it. Oh, that's cool. It's a it's yeah, Isn't it's a so cool? paradox opera. The X is right in the middle, so it's got that set symmetry. That's a great looking logo. We'll yeah. uh, we'll, we'll thank we'll, you. We'll make sure when the I'm episode so goes live, we'll you know I'll we'll share all, all this. Yeah, please send us stuff. We'll we'll uh, uh -huh. we'll get it out there for people. We'll talk more about opera as we get into the quiz. But let's uh, let's tidy some things up for you. Tidy up. Before we go, go any further with the show, show. Tidy up before we go, go. Fix our mistakes tonight. I want to get it right. Tidy up. I literally had a moment where I was like, I just want to pull this down. I don't want it to get to the high notes. I don't want to, I don't want her to hear any. I was like, oh my God, what did I get myself into? No, that's our, yeah, that's our tidy up jingle. So, um, I love it. <laughs> Maybe we can get her to record it for you. Yeah. We're going to have to have you redub all my vocals and this will, you'll be our new, uh, log vocalist. So we're, we're going to do something new here for now. We're going to call it our mental health check-in of the week. And this is just a reminder to like, reflect on our weeks and think about um, you know some good things that that maybe happen and Alyssa has agreed to participate with us which is awesome we're very excited about that so we're gonna ask we're gonna we're each gonna answer two questions we're gonna answer what is one thing you did for yourself this week and we're gonna answer what is one victory you had from this week maybe they're the same thing maybe they're different the thing that I like about this is you can get as vulnerable as you want or as unvulnerable <laughs> as you want I will be mildly vulnerable here and share the one thing I did for myself this week is I went to therapy and I hadn't gone for most of this year and I just started with a new therapist last week and I went this week, had a very good session. I was having a rough start to my week and that really turned the page for me and really got me on a good track. So that's that's one good thing I did for myself this week and I, I'm happy to share it here. So I'd love to hear uh, your answers. Who, who wants to go next? I'll go next. Okay, I, and, and actually kind of in the same vein as you, Kevin, I, I didn't go see a therapist, but I went to the doctor and got medicine for depression. Hey, I started taking that. So. John, oh, my heart. Good for you, man. That's fantastic. I really encourage and support that decision. And um, mm -hmm. thanks for being willing to share that. Yeah. yeah. Alyssa, what, what, what do we got? What's one good thing you did for yourself this week? So mine is weird. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. <laughs> So I, I have joked over the last several weeks or months as, as you know, we've all kind of been going through it and I've had a, a bit of a rough patch. And mm -hmm. in the deepest depths of my descent into madness, I discovered my love for cursed Furbies. Cursed Furby? I know what a Furby is. Uh huh. What is a, what is a cursed Furby? <laughs> She's holding a, <laughs> oh my God, it looks like a snake with a weird Furby face. So it, it looks like a cursed Kirby. It looks like a demonic sort of devil creature Kirby. Oh my God, so, tell me um, about this. This is, this is a small one here that if, if you're watching, you can see. But uh -huh. particularly I have discovered a love for long Furbies. And when okay. I say long, I mean five to six feet long, like wow. taller than me. Uh, and I may have bought two of them, and they <laughs> they arrived this week, and I have affectionately called them my emotional support Furbies. 
Amen. And have yep. given myself the title Lord of the Long Furbs. And um, <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> I I may have just forgotten that your name is actually Alyssa and you're now Lord of the Long Furbs only to me. Yeah, so just. I, can, can you wear them like a boa and, you know, just wear them the next time you're on stage? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's great. That sounds like a great. Uh, you treated yourself this week, and you got the emotional support you needed from those fantastically weird creatures. Exactly. We'll do a we'll do a, a round of one victory from this week. Gosh, you know what I did this week? I'm gonna call it a victory because I tried something new, and it was rollerblading both of my dogs. I have rollerblades. I've rollerbladed one of my dogs, and it's it's crazy and scary. I tried with both. And it did not go well. <laughs> was, I, luckily, I didn't eat it. I had pads on and everything, so I was well taken care of. But they were pulling in different directions. They were going crazy. I was out for like four minutes, and I said, nope. We, I, You know what? I learned my lesson. I can rollerblade one dog at a time, and I'm glad that I tried it. I'm going to call that a victory from my week. That sounds terrifying, but I'm glad you survived. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe get a get a tricycle first, <laughs> so you can't fall over. <laughs> that's much. Yeah, you're right. In fact, uh, yep, that's gonna have to happen. Work, work your way up to a dog sled in L.A. <laughs> yeah, I'll be I'll be the I'll be the weird guy on the tricycle with a pack of dogs just pulling me. I'm like, hey, everyone. Uh, John. As far as victory goes, you know, I, I think probably the same thing as, you know, something I did for myself. I, that was yeah. something that I've been needing to do for a while. And I'm an advocate for, you know, mental health and getting other people help. And I finally stopped neglecting mine. So, ah, uh, that's awesome, man. You took a big step. I, that is a big victory. Yep. A round of applause. In fact, oh, no, our sound isn't working. Otherwise, I'd play <laughs> a clapping sound effect for you. <laughs> Huge victory. Alyssa, do you have a victory yeah. from your week you want to share? I do. This is less weird. Um, <laughs> so I, as, as we briefly mentioned before, have started my own opera company. And this week I have written and sent out our first round of contracts for our first show. And I, it, that I am not a business person. Like I'm good mm -hmm. at it, but it does not bring me joy. And uh -huh. so it's done. I sent them out. I feel so official. And I was just like, yes, I'm so proud of myself. We're doing things. We're making art. Yes. <laughs> Good so for you. That's I, awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those little victories when it comes to like starting a new endeavor all turn into big victories. They all add up. And so that's great. And what a great transition because you're talking about opera and we can get into our opera quiz. Ready to do this? Let's do it. It's time to take a quiz or two. Like a genius podcast doing this for you. You may fail, but it ain't no lie, baby, it's quiz time. Don't really want this quiz to be tough. I just want to pass one because I failed enough. It might sound crazy, but it ain't no lie, baby, it's quiz time. Yes, and Alyssa doing the bye 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 dance moves, which is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Which is what we could we we couldn't ask more of a guest really than that. No. So Alyssa, before we hand over the reins to you, I thought we'd do a quick. So my knowledge of opera is extremely minimal. My connection to opera would be that uh, every time I'm watching Jeopardy and the opera category comes up, I go over five every single time. So I feel somewhat unprepared for this quiz, but uh, I am so excited to learn. I want to be cultured. I wanna, I wanna be connected to this. And your enthusiasm already, Alyssa, has made me very eager and excited to learn. Um, John, you were saying you have, you have some opera experience. What, what were I you do. saying? Yeah, I, back in college at Manchester, our choir director, she would, every January, would put on an opera workshop type deal. And sometimes it was one opera, other times it would just be scenes from different operas. And so I've sang in the chorus of a few of them. Nice. Um, and I played the uh, old dead guy in Johnny Skeeky. Oh, uh, yeah, a, a, a role you were born to play. <laughs> it, it, playing a dead guy is surprisingly hard. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't doubt it. <laughs> because you, you can't fall asleep and you just got to lay there and be still and do nothing. Yeah, no, pretending to be asleep or dead on stage, honestly, is the hardest thing because it's true. You're just mm -hmm. like, what if I just actually take a nap? No, you cannot do that. Oh. <laughs> wow. So John's got a little knowledge. I have very little, but what we've learned in the past is that makes no difference on how we do on these quizzes. <laughs> it might, it might this time. Um, right. Alyssa, we're, we're very grateful to have Alyssa here who is a professional opera singer. And, um, you know, you can preface however you'd like, but otherwise I'll hand the reins over to you and we can jump into, uh, to, to these five questions we have. First of all, I have to apologize because a couple of the questions, really only two of them, I intentionally 
made it a little tricksy. But okay, okay, <laughs> that's fun. We'll be we'll be prepared then. We'll be but yeah, it'll be fun. Since this is such a broad thing and something that I know isn't on the you know the front face of everybody's radar. Question number <laughs> one, plain and simple: What is opera? Right. So here are our four options. A. A staged drama set to music in its entirety made up of only instrumental pieces. B. A staged drama set to music with some dialogue interspersed made up of vocal pieces with instrumental accompaniment. C. A large group of people screaming over an orchestra. (laughs) Or D. A staged drama set to music in its entirety made up of vocal pieces with instrumental accompaniment. Oh my gosh, Alyssa, this is crazy. I love it. Disgust. I love it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so if technically C is true, a large group of people screaming over an orchestra, well, we get half credit if that's the right answer. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's a a great answer. Um, What are your thoughts, John? Uh, I'm going with D. I mean, B, it would be a musical, and D is an opera. Oh, that's very good. That's very good. I think maybe I should have gone first um, so that you didn't spoil the answer for me. I think I would have chosen D regardless. But yeah, what I'm seeing is the main difference between B and D is that B includes set to music with some dialogue interspersed, whereas D says drama set to music in its entirety. I think that is the key phrase. So I'm going to choose I'm going to choose D as well, John. We're both choosing D. Yep. Ding, ding, Mm -hmm. ding. Yay. You're both correct. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So so as as John said, the difference specifically with B and part of why I put that in is yes. So an opera is fully sung through and a musical or an operetta or in there are some German operas called a Zingspiel. It's the same thing as an operetta also Great word. have dialogue interspersed. Um, but that's basically the biggest difference is just everything is sung through. Something else to note as well, the, the biggest difference I know because Everyone's always like, oh, operas and like musical theater. They're so, so, so different. I'm like, they're like kind of the same thing. The biggest difference really is just that the style of singing and the way that we produce our voice in opera, we do not use microphones. All of the amplification comes from our bodies and the way that we sing. And in wow. more contemporary musical theater, you'll use microphones. So the, the style and the technique of singing is a little bit different, but also generally just like good technique is good technique. But it's you. the way that you produce the sound. That is another big difference between the styles. Do you personally find one more difficult than the other or more challenging? Or even which do you prefer between musical theater and opera? For me, they're differently challenging. I do both and I have a deep love for both. I'm very much someone who's like, no, I love it all. Like, let's do it all. But I think that in both of those different styles, there's so many opportunities to really dig deep into human emotion and sort of peel back the layers and and reach people deeply to their core in ways that you can't in just talking to them. I'm like, it's part of why I do this and why I'm so passionate about this art form is I feel like music and musical theater of all varieties, it can tap into people in just a totally different way, in a much deeper way. And I love getting to do things that like will make people think in a different way. They'll have experiences that they could never have imagined that they could have had. Mm. Even like maybe have a, an experience of catharsis that they didn't know that they needed, wow. anything like that. Well, and, and, and Kevin, a question for you is when, when you think of opera, what do you think? Like what kind of style of story is it? That's a great question. I, I don't even know how to answer that. I So yeah, I guess the the the... the imagery coming to head is kind of like old school, like European, you know, I I think the, the cliche is right. right, The fat lady, right? Like a a large woman with white makeup on her face, just saying like, that's the (laughs) image that I think that's the stereotypical image of opera. Well, but like, like dramatic, you know, and things like that. Yeah. That's a good point. I would typically think like usually dramatic, uh, either love or tragedy kind of stories, but I'm guessing that, that it, it, it runs the gamut. Oh, it does. Like uh, the one, the one where I played the dead guy, Johnny mm-hmm. Skeeky. That one is just pure comedy. Yeah, and you know I'm a fan of comedy, so that's why I, I think that's why you're asking me this question. There's so much comedy. I just a couple of months ago sang in a production of The Barber of Seville by Rossini, which is hysterical. And funnily enough, exactly to this point, my my roommate came to see it, and he was excited because I was in it, and he supports me, and he loves the arts. But the first thing he said to me afterwards was. Oh my God, I was laughing hysterically. I, there's, it just didn't process that opera can be funny. I was like, yeah, there's so, so much of that. 
Well, and Pirates of Penzance is a pretty funny one, too. Hysterical. It, yeah, I love comic opera. That's, that's a huge joy of mine. It feels like we're breaking down barriers already because you're right. I never would have put the words <laughs> opera and funny deliberately in the same sentence. And, uh, and, and that's not only is it a thing, it's a, it's a, it sounds like it's a relatively common thing. Awesome. Yeah. Let's move forward with the, with the learning, shall we? Should we get into number two? Let's do it. So this is a true or false. Operas are written in many different languages. If I don't understand the language, I can still enjoy and understand the show. True or false? <laughs> God. I love this question. <laughs> I love this question. I mean, look, I, I think I have to choose true that yes, even though it's in a different language, I can still enjoy and understand the show. Yeah, because I would guess that, you know, I, I hesitated when I said understand because I'm thinking, okay, I don't understand the language. Will I understand the show? I have a feeling that through the acting, through the scenes, through the emotions felt that I can still understand the show. So I'm going to choose true. I'm going to say true too. All right. How do we do? You are both correct, but right. for different reasons than you stated. And this is why I included this question. All right. Because it was recently brought to my attention through the same story. Actually, my roommate coming to see my show a couple months ago. Operas have subtitles. Mm -hmm. What? How? This is a very normal thing. And I realized that people don't, I'm sorry, I'm punching my microphone. People don't know this. No, I And I'm no, like, wait, what? I have yeah. no clue. How are they subtitled? Like I know in some theater, like opera houses, they've got little screens in front of, like on the back of the seat in front of you. What? So depending on the theater. So if you're at the Metropolitan Opera, you're very bougie. You've got them on the seat. But every opera house, Every single opera house, if you're going to see an opera, above the stage, there will be a little bar and they project what we call super titles above the stage. So no wow. matter what language they're singing in, you can read them. Do you like how I tried to get all artsy with it? Like, oh, the emotion, <laughs> which is probably true. I know that's not BS, yeah. Yeah. but, <laughs> but you, you can literally understand what's going on because of the captions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I really wanted to talk about this because it blew my yep. mind realizing that people don't know this because it's so normal to us. It's common mm -hmm. knowledge to us. Of course, there are super titles because like we do that. Yeah. And realizing that that's not a piece of information that most people have. I'm like, oh, hold on. We need to like scream and shout about this because <laughs> totally. I think that is honestly one of the biggest barriers to people coming to see an opera for the first time is not yeah. realizing that it's easy to digest. When you first said that they are captioned, what came to my mind was that they hand out like Tony Stark glasses and then you can <laughs> read that like the <laughs> captions come up as you're reading them. Now, that's the next element. Maybe that's something your say, company can put the investment I think, into. Uh, <laughs> I think you need to invent that now. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yep, this is my project. Oh my gosh. That, super informative. We're only two questions in and I already am like, all right, I have I'm committing to go to an opera. Like I I this this is my homework for this for sure. And and because it sounds fun, it doesn't sound like homework. It sounds like it's it would be something well, very I mean, cool and enjoyable. I mean the fact that you live in LA, there's probably a de decent opera house that you could go to. Yeah. Oh, I would guess several. So. I mean you could go to LA Opera, you could go to uh, a smaller company, Pacific Opera Project. You should see if they've got anything going on because they put on hilarious, fabulous, like contemporary reimaginings of shows. They're really cool. And I know oh. they're based in LA. You should check them out. Oh, good suggestion. Uh, let's keep learning. Number three, right? All right. Number three. This is sort of out of left field, but I thought this was interesting. So according to a 2016 census by Opera Base, what is the most frequently performed opera in the world? Wow. A, La Boheme by Puccini. B, La Traviata by Verdi, C, The Magic Flute by Mozart, or D, Carmen by Bizet. Excellent pronunciation, I, I assume, but I love the, the little rolling R's and the, the phew, that's good. John, don't answer yet. Do you have, do you have any knowledge I, of this? I mean, I know all four of them. Okay, I don't. And I like La Boheme is what Rent is based off of. Oh, cool. It's a very similar storyline. In fact, you know, Rent even has the song Love E Bohem. Dang, John, look at, man, <laughs> hang on, wait a minute. I think that's good enough for a John <laughs> Knowledge Bomb. That's a John Knowledge Bomb if I ever heard one right there. <laughs> that, is, that is a random <laughs> fact that is just very impressive that you just pulled out. Well done. But I, I can't tell you if that's the most frequently performed opera, though. I know Carmen is a big, like, they're all four big. 
I would say this is a little mean because they are the top four. Yeah. <laughs> Intro, okay. Good what? to know. That's well, cool. And, and like Magic Flute gets referenced in uh, Moulin Rouge. Wow. Yeah. So I've heard of the Magic Flute. Luckily, I know who Puccini, Verde, and Mozart are. Uh, what is the last name? Is it pronounced Bizet or Bizet? Bizet. Yeah. Bizet. Uh-huh. And I've heard of Carmen. I just would not have been able to name who it was by. I personally will tell you what I'm going to choose. And it's only. Actually, I don't really have a solid reason. I just Verde popped out to me. Verde is the name that popped out to me. So I'm going to choose B, La, La Traviata by Verde. And then, yeah, John, what do you what do you think you're going to go with? I think I'm just going to go with D, just because I pref- I like Carmen better. All right, how do we do, Alyssa? Kevin, you are correct. Yeah, sorry, John. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Woo, Kevin knows his I, opera. <laughs> I have to say, I was I was surprised that Traviata beat the others out, uh-huh. but. Part of the reason I wanted to include this is I personally think La Traviata is a really good first opera for people if you're oh. looking for an introduction to Italian opera because it's short. Oh, it's, yeah, sure. It runs, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> think people think operas are like four or five forever hours long. Uh-huh. Some are. Uh-huh. But Traviata, which is the most performed opera in the world, at least according to that census at the time, <laughs> it typically runs under two and a half hours. You'll definitely, definitely know some of the music because oh, cool. the drinking chorus is mm-hmm. used in popular media all the time. You've definitely heard it. The Lipiamo, Lipiamo, Yeah. Oh, that was so good. That. We got a little, <laughs> right? that was just that was just a little glimmer. That was so good. But yes, that is very recognizable. So, you know, that comes in real quick at the beginning of the show. So immediately, even if you've never seen an opera before, you're going to hear something that you're familiar with. Yeah. And then the plot moves at a good clip. It's drama, but it's still I, I think it's a really engaging and good first show, especially in Italian opera. So mm-hmm. it's like, I, no, I think this is good. I mean, all of them, honestly. Mm-hmm. They all sort of cover different things. I, they're all great shows to see but I'm a, I'm a huge fan of a first Traviata because it moves it's familiar music and we, we like having a good short evening if it's intimidating <laughs> yeah I was gonna say especially to get somebody to kind of dip their toe in for the first time that's a great yeah. that's a great exactly. way to do it Wow, phenomenal. This is uh this is great stuff. Do you speak another language, Alyssa? Or what what was I gonna call you again? Lord of the um Lord uh, of the Long Verbs. Yes, Lord, Lord yeah, of the Long I'm, Verbs. I'm like uh, I'm like the modern day Daenerys Targaryen. I have so many titles. I'm the Queen of <laughs> Chaos, the Lord of the Long Verbs. Uh yeah. <laughs> I just keep giving myself titles. I love it. Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> Do you speak any other languages? Did you have to, is, is part of your training learning other languages, having a familiarity? Yeah, so in, in my training, I was trained in Italian, German, and French, as well as, I've sung in so many languages, but we did have to take comprehension classes of those three languages along with the diction. So I have a very basic conversational skill in those three languages. My Italian is better than my German and my French because I have a lot of family in Italy oh, and they nice. yell at me and get mad that my Italian's not better. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm out of practice. I'm sorry. <laughs> so sometimes I speak, speak Italian and sometimes I like speak Italian. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Well, in the if you want to tell your family, there's two dudes who did a podcast who heard you say some titles in Italian uh, that sound, <laughs> it sounded beautiful, sounded great. So you tell them you're good. You're good to go. See, the thing is, we actually train separately comprehension and diction. So mm. my diction is impeccable. I, I teach diction and that's cool. something I pride myself on. So I can sit and read it and you'll go, wow, she speaks that language. Do I know what I'm saying? No, I got to look it up. Got it. Got it. Which, which kind of makes sense considering you're in a performing arts of those languages and, and really the presentation of how it sounds is is one of the most important aspects, I would guess. So Yeah, I mean, I, I know when I was in college, like I think all the operas that we sang were we translated into English just because it was a student production and, you know, students and family coming. No, no opera, you know, people are going to come and grade it. Um, but I know in qu- like when I did choir, some of the songs were like in Latin and stuff. And so, you know, I, I know a little Latin because of my science degree, but mm-hmm. you could still learn how to sing the Latin without understanding the Latin. Man, John, I had no idea you were so cultured in, in your in your <laughs> musical and opera uh, history. I never said I was a good good singer, but... I've been trying to get John to sing. We, we, we bounced around the... I guess I haven't been trying that hard, but we did bounce around the idea. I forget if it was your aunt or your grandma. Somebody was uh, suggesting... It was my uncle. 
Yeah, that for our theme song that I sing one line and then John sing the next. I was like, I am down for that. But John was like, eh, now it sounds better when you do it. <laughs> uh, it's my, my uh, introvertedness. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna get you singing eventually on this podcast. That's my new goal. <laughs> I support this. Yes, good, good. We'll get, we'll, we'll, <laughs> Alyssa and I will scheme behind the scenes and eventually some episode down the line, we'll get you singing. <laughs> It'll be great. Maybe provide some vocal coaching first. And then. <laughs> I mean, shameless self promotion. I do teach professionally. So awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Could theoretically somebody listening to this podcast reach out to Alyssa, the Lord of the, God, why do I keep forgetting the, the word? The long verbs. <laughs> yeah, the long verbs. Thank you. Could they theoretically get you as a vocal coach if they were looking? Yeah. So actually, sort of fortunately and unfortunately, because of the pandemic, I have been exclusively teaching online for the last two years. But I'm always I'm always open to to new students if anyone's interested. Well, let's uh, you got two students right here and just learning what opera <laughs> is. So let's yes. see. Let's go on to number four. All righty. Number four. This, uh, if you were paying attention, I sort of accidentally kind of spoiled <laughs> earlier. But who knows? Maybe you weren't paying attention. Yeah. True or false? New operas are still being written today. Odds are I was not paying attention for the record. Just uh, <laughs> my history on this show is that I, I miss details all the time. Um, it's I, true. He does. Aside from whether you said it or not, my guess would have been true. I, In fact, one of the questions I was going to ask you, maybe this is what you said, was if you are someone who writes operas. And um, I would assume, yes, that operas are, are written today. What are you saying, John? I'm saying true. Okay. We're both saying True. You are correct. Nice. So, no, I do not personally write operas, but a lot of what I specialize in is working with composers and creating new operas. But I think it's really important, I put this in as well, for people to, to realize that this art form is very much still alive and that operas are being written today here in English about current events. They're, they're not antiquated stories. There are wow. so many pieces that are being written about what we are experiencing right now today. And uh, I, I feel like that's something that I often hear that people are like, oh yeah, well, all composers are dead. Like, mm. what? No. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, you talk about operas that have that are talking about current events. Are these like mainstream operas that are that are available? Or are most of them kind of like up and coming and they're local and then hopefully hoping to expand or yes and no. There's there's some of both. There's obviously some very well-known, famous in the opera world composers who are writing works right now, but there's also some younger people who are writing things. There's a whole a whole breadth of things. Uh one of my favorites, this is was written probably like 10 years ago. I can't remember exactly. But if you know the story of the ceasefire on Christmas Eve during World War I, when mm -hmm. everyone stopped and, and played football together and stopped fighting and, and sang together, uh, a composer named Kevin Putz wrote an opera called Silent Night that tells that story. And it's spectacular. Wow. It actually won a Pulitzer and it's well-deserved because all of the characters sing in the language that they would actually have been speaking. So it's a multilingual <sighs> opera. Wow. It's stunning. Obviously yeah. that's not current, 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 but you know, it's like, it's an event that we remember yeah. And oh, it's so it's so beautiful. Well, I have to say before we even get into the fifth question, Alyssa, you've done a great job of really shedding light on things that I think are are important and and helpful <laughs> for people to know and digest what opera is in general. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'm not just saying it. I, you know, my eyes are open. I guess I in theory, if somebody out of the blue asked me, are they still making operas today? I probably would have said yes, but I wouldn't have had any context. I wouldn't have had this explanation. I wouldn't have, you know, it's, you've really been a great ambassador for the art form already. And so, uh, yeah, thanks for opening, opening up some, some eyes and ears already. Thank you. I'm so glad that that's my goal. I mean, that's sort of like a general overarching, like life goal is I'm like, Hey guys, Opera's cool. And also, <laughs> for those of you who are watching, or if, if you want Google me and look at a picture of me, like, also, we look like this. Hi, yeah. I'm a small <laughs> nerd. Yeah. It, or you're, you're, a, you're, you are know, you're you're a modern looking person. You look like, you know, you look like someone who exists today, not some yeah. fat lady, for lack of a better word, that is sort of <laughs> the stereotypical version of what people see as, 
as opera singers. So yeah, it's it's very uh, it's very eye opening. That's also a spectacularly perfect transition to our last question. Yeah, let's do it. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> because exactly this this all ties into this, oh. and, and we'll chat about it once once we get through the question. But that is, as you've stated, the biggest stereotype that I think everybody thinks when they think of opera. Oh, it's the fat lady who sings, and we this comes mm-hmm. from the phrase "It ain't over till the fat lady sings," as well as imagery <laughs> perpetuated by popular media but so Mm -hmm. question number Mm -hmm. five what is the origin of the phrase it ain't over till the fat lady sings (laughs) i went a little hard on these answers so good luck okay this will be fun a the phrase references the end of Verdi's La Traviata, spoiler, which ends with Violetta's final surge of life moments before dying of consumption. Violetta has historically been portrayed by larger singers. I don't think you can spoil anything that's that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've had time. We've had time. <laughs> you never know. B, the phrase originates from the Looney Tunes opera episodes. Oh my goodness. C, The phrase references the end of Wagner's ring cycle, which ends with a 20 plus minute scene sung by the Valkyrie Brunhilde, who has historically been portrayed by larger singers. Or D, the phrase originates from a review of a production of Berlioz's Les Troyens. This opera is notoriously long, and the reviewer noted his relief when Dido stabs herself and sings of her final vision of Carthage's destruction, signaling the end of the show. Dido is historically portrayed by larger singers. Oh my God! You know what? This is this is a good time. To, you know, uh, yes, this, just just coming up with this question and those choices alone, very impressive. Because any one of these sounds like it would be a reason. And to, to, I assume that unless you've just made up some of these things, like all of them sound like real things that exist in this world. So, um, great question. Well, you know, when you when you were talking earlier, Kevin, about, you know, what you pictured when you thought of opera, mm-hmm. you know, the, the big lady with, you know, like the helmed, like the, hor- the horned the horns, helmet and stuff, yeah. uh-huh. that that's, you're thinking Brunhilde. Got it. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Is that, does that, what am I trying to say, influence what you're going to choose, John? I mean, I'm kind of leaning towards that. Like, I, I've heard the reason before, and I'm just trying to remember what it is. Yeah. And that one is leaning towards that one. And that one, again, is from Wagner's Ring Cycle, which ends with a 20-plus minute scene sung by the Valkyrie Bruhilda, who has historically been betrayed by larger singers. Right. I mean, and that, you know, the, the flight of the Valkyrie, that dun 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 yeah. that's from that. Hey, that was a little bit of singing, I'm just going to say. That was, <laughs> I'm, I want more, but that was a little bit. <laughs> Okay, so as you're thinking about that, I'm thinking about mm-hmm. what I want to choose. I mean, look, I am a, I, I can be pretty self-deprecating sometimes, and I'm trying to be better about that. I'm prefacing what I'm about to say. I'm trying not to be a self-deprecating, but I am, uh, as a consumer, I do tend to be, ooh, shiny, ooh, fun, ooh, cartoon. So that's why <laughs> Looney Tunes jumps out to me. It's like, oh, that is a fun answer, and I really want to choose it because I do know that, well, I, do, I guess I don't know, but I can envision Looney Tunes doing like, I get I, I call them parodies of operas, I don't know if that's really where it would have originated from, but it almost wouldn't surprise me. Like, I kind of want to go out on a limb and choose that one. So I might. I might. What are you going to choose, John? I think I'll just stick with C. You're going to do the Broomhilda one, which is C. Yep. You know, since I put all this energy into it, I'm not going to change it now. So I'm going to choose B, the <laughs> Looney Tunes one. Well, John is very correct. Oh, God. <laughs> nice job, John. And that's a big <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm always going to choose... Tied. I will always choose the cartoon one, just for the record, if anyone's ever <laughs> making a quiz for me in the future. Well... Part of the reason I included that was very much to throw you off because it is in part due to the Looney Tunes cartoons that that imagery has been perpetuated as the stereotype. First of all, currently, as you can see or Google and you will see, uh, that is not true that all opera singers are heavyset Vikings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I am, uh, believe it or not, Five foot two and barely over a hundred pounds, and uh, I make a. Uh, can, can I curse on this podcast? Yeah, yeah. I make a metric f- ton of sound. <laughs> 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 uh, it, it really yeah, does do. not have to do with you know the structure of your body. It's purely you learn technique. It's all about breath support, which you know. Again, I, I think that it's such a funny 
thing that this stereotype has been so aggressively perpetuated through popular media because without fail, mm -hmm. when people meet me and find out I'm an opera singer, the first thing out of their mouth is always, wait, but you're so small. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, and? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's wow. just like, can't, doesn't process. Yeah. But yeah, just a little bit of history on this. So the Wagner's The Ring Cycle is based on the same mythology that Lord of the Rings is based on. So if you're familiar with that, you're familiar yeah. with this. It is a four opera long cycle. The, all of which are quite lengthy, and the last of which is called Gute Demerung, and it is notoriously wow. long. And so this is where this phrase originates, is you know, finally, after hours and hours and hours <laughs> of Wagnerian mythology, Brunhilde comes out with her big spear and her Viking Valkyrie helmet and sings this eternal finale, and that this is where the, the phrase, oh, okay, the fat yes. lady has sung, it is now over. And, you know, often to great relief because it, it is fabulous, but it it's like six uh -huh. hours long. And that's the last of four parts. Like yep. it's eternal. Yep. So it's a welcome <laughs> sight when the when the fat Viking lady comes out and starts to sing. It really yeah. is. All right. So did you have anything else on that uh, on that specific topic of the uh, fat lady singing? It's not true. It's not true. <laughs> that's the that's the big takeaway. And um, it really is just that, just like everything else in life, like people who look like everything you can imagine can and do do these yeah. things. Yeah, we look, you've broken stereotypes. You've educated on just what opera is in general, what it isn't. We're going to get Tony Stark glasses in the work. Like we've got new ideas going. <laughs> um, you, yeah, you, you, I've kind of already said it. Uh, I don't want to pour it on too thick, but you've been an excellent ambassador for your art form. And uh, and we so appreciate you for coming on. Uh, you know, a couple questions about you is like, where can we, where can we find you digitally? And wh where can people maybe see you perform down the line in the future? What's on your, What's what's coming up? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a kind of complicated long list. So if you want specifically my opera <laughs> stuff, um, you can Google my name, Alyssa Rocca, A-L-I-S-S-A-R-O-C-A. -S 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 my website is alyssarocca.com and I have my YouTube channel under the same name where I've got some videos of performances that are older than I'd like to admit now since, you know, <laughs> we haven't been able to do anything for several years. I know. Um, yeah. But I'm also all over <laughs> social media. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Divatron9000, which is also my Twitch handle because I also, because I do too many things, stream mm -hmm. on Twitch. And I do a plethora of things on there, mostly gaming. Sometimes we sing. I do lots of silly voices and voice acting and you can see the Furbies on there. <laughs> Same thing, twitch.tv slash divatron9000. That's what the, the people wanted, the Furbies. That's what I was like waiting for you to get to the Furbies because that's what people yeah. are here for. <laughs> I mean, listen, same. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, if you're interested in also, if you want to contact me for any reason, for singing, for lessons, for voiceover, for anything, shameless self-promo, there is a contact link on my website if awesome. anyone is interested. Also, again, I'm so easy to find on socials. I am... In a month from now, if you're listening currently in April of 2022, I'm singing with Opera on the James in Lynchburg, Virginia, which is really fun. We're doing some kids touring shows and also some big concerts at the historic theater there. But then also my company, Paradox Opera, which we're at Paradox Opera on all socials website coming soon. We're awesome. working on producing our first show for July of 2022. Cool. We're going to be doing a small North American tour in Ooh. person, wow. but also am going to be producing it for a virtual audience as well. So that'll be hosted on one of our Twitch channels and there'll be info on our social cool. media. It's a production I'm calling COVID Chronicles. And <laughs> <laughs> I've got a fantastic group of two other singers, myself and a, an incredible pianist, that together we're creating this show that's sort of going through the journey of our COVID experiences and our community's COVID experiences and hoping to have a, a fun, funny, but also cathartic experience detoxing. Yeah, well, we're, you know, I think it's great that you have a, a, a virtual version of that that you're going to put on as well so that people who aren't mm -hmm. in the regions that you're going to will be able to see you. But we will we will certainly yeah. share all of your information uh, on our on our socials yeah. and whatnot. We are, uh, yeah, just so grateful that you've come on and, and you're, you're now a friend of our show and um, we will we will gladly support you in your endeavors. I think uh, oh, yeah. 
what you're doing is is fantastic. So um, yeah, you. keep going. Very inspiring. Thanks for giving me yet another stage to scream about how cool opera is. <laughs> yes, yes. No problem. <laughs> All right, we'll be back next week, John. Oh wait, by the way, we what do we do? We tied four for five. Yeah, yeah, we, we both tied. We are yeah. both. Yeah. I think we both. Y'all we're, did we're go, good. That's refrigerator worthy work right there. I'm gonna pin that thing up, <laughs> man. That's great. All right, so every everybody wins today. This is great. Yep. It's the lack of genius podcast in your ear holes at last they don't know they're mars from venus that's why it's the lack of genius podcast and have given myself the title lord of the long firms and um, (laughs) no regrets